into the gateway. Now! Yeah, war! War! <laughs> yeah! Fuck time, I have to say, especially for me. Hello and welcome to Foundry Files, episode 43, and oh my god, I'm Admiral Murphy, that's Wee Wee, oh, you know, actually he's over here, sorry, I always point the wrong way, I'm getting used to it, remember I used to be in that living room, and he was over here, but now he's over here, yeah, anyway, holy god, this was like the best Stow Week ever, like, so, okay, so many good things happened. It was good. Okay, good does not even begin to explain it. We've got an awesome Foundry review coming up here for you guys. Boy, was I impressed with this part of Purity. But, I think we have to talk about this first just because uh, in the past when Cryptic's done their story content releases, we've always talked about it. Because sadly, they're few and far between. Except for Legacy Romulus, that was the, the weird individual case, which I wish more was coming. And everybody knows I've been super down with Season 8 going, Oh, I don't care, it's stupid dinosaurs and, and grindy content. Um, well, Sphere of Influence came out this week, and it was awesome. Well, why did it come out? Um, yeah. Yeah. We, we, why, what was like the sole reason this was awesome? I, I have a feeling you're going to... Wolf. Worf, yeah. Wolf. Oh my god, Worf has made the mission completely. I know even people who said they hated it, said Worf made the mission. His voice acting in this is great. The new character model is great. I love going around the base during the mission and teaming up with him. The story like that is great. We're not going to go too in-depth because, of course, this is a Foundry show, but I felt we should talk about it a bit. I love the story in this one. It's good. It continues the plot line quite a bit. Uh, how'd you and find it? it also explains why Worf's in-game uh, character was remodeled just under a month ago, I want to say, Kronos. Those of you who noticed and run, run by Worf every day at the First City would notice, oh, Worf, why have you changed all so much? You, you had a makeover. You no longer have white hair. This is why. Um, so, yeah, the, the, really good. Fantastic, fantastic guy, Michael Gone, for, for coming in. I'm hoping, oh my god, am I hoping he's done voiceovers for other things like a faction. But... And that's just that's just something to hold on, yeah. really, isn't it? So. And then we've got... Uh, I thought the technical in this mission was great. Some new technical things that were awesome to play through. Especially that map where you're opening catwalks and stuff. That was fun. Um, oh my god, I love the... I'm not going to say what it was, but there's a great tie-in to an episode of Star Trek here. That was just like when I figured out, oh, they're tying into this episode. Oh my god! It's awesome. The, uh, the only part I think I'll complain about a bit is gameplay. I think this is good for a one-time only kind of playthrough. I don't think there's a lot of replay yeah. in this one. Yeah, the, the, the only reason you would ever replay it is to perhaps get the obelisk on other characters. On the character. If, if, didn't, if you didn't want to get the advanced version of the lobby soft yep. you just want to stick with the standard version. It's free ship. Why, why would you not? Maybe the walk car as well. You can also get the advanced version of the fighters in the mission as well if you could beat all the optionals and head back to one of the other optional side missions, which is good, by the way. That's free, op free advanced stuff always nice free stuff but um yeah it's it's it it, it, it it took about 10 minutes for me to replay it through fast pace but yeah i'd have to agree with you generally it's 
Yeah. You want to play it the first time, you don't really want to play it again. There's not... You want to have it's a great character. story mission. It fills in a lot of the gaps, which makes it epic. But if you're going to... I know people who, who've played this, like, now six times on there's all the There's not a lot of combat. Yeah. There's not a lot there's of combat. The, the, the gameplay is pretty linear. Like, there's not any other choices you can make. The non-combat, there's a few puzzles, but they're little. And it's mostly going around pressing F, so, of course, that's boring. But you're so engrossed into the story and the environment that it's okay. But uh, when you get to the end, I, I love the space battle. Um, you're flying in the alien ship at this time, so you do get to yep. test around with it and stuff. I know a few people have complained, though. If you if they're going to go... They hated the fact that, again, their bridge officers are not in the mission, which I always do hate. I put a lot of time into them, and I hate when they're left out. And you're not flying around in your own ship, so you don't get to enjoy your own ship. And it's basically the same ship, no matter who you play as what class you play as and all that stuff when you go through this space battle and i kind of agree i go yeah i mean i might want to try this out with a science ship or a, a cruiser or something but no you have to play it every time with this one ship yeah the the, the mission the mission though itself i i can understand there is a, a logical reason why they yes put the exactly in. but at, at the same time kind of like well maybe a bit of variety would have been nice but uh, also also i think i want to mention the Romulans have an official flagship now. Oh yeah, by the I way. love that the, the captain too. I talked to her a bit yeah. ago. Ooh. It, it, she was, uh, yeah, she was quite nice. Um, Isn't that the person course, from the uh, front it, it, page? She, she, she is the daughter of the Romulan from the Defector. The in in that rom in that in that episode of TNG, the Defector is betrayed and he runs to the Romulans. You know that you know the you wait, know the wait, episode. Wait, okay, it's, no, it's I don't. Is it the blonde haired guy? But he mentions he but he mentions he has a family before he commits suicide and writes a letter to them. She is one of them. She yeah. is the daughter of the of the Romulan from the Defector. So it's the same it's, it's the same uh, family lineage. Is this the so, no? This isn't the blonde haired guy. That was a human guy. I don't remember much about this episode. I'll have to go and oh, look it up. It, it's 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 that guy you paid he, he appeared on a few regular uh, Star Trek episodes. Um, he, at the beginning of the episode, it's it's that Roman and Scout ship being chased by the war, but it, it, it decloaks and all this massive sequence. Yeah, and... I remember that part. I just don't remember what the episode was. It's been so long since I've seen TNG. So. Oh my god. Oh, but, well, that's yeah. that's like one of the best ones there is, but it it was it was good. Yeah. Um, so so that yeah, was the flagship. The flagship is a falchion, if I remember the falchion yeah. variant of this. So they have a, they have a scimitar as a, as a flagship, which is quite cool. Uh, so I will admit when that uh, the, the end battle is quite cool because of uh, that a uh, certain aspect that happens. We have, which is cool. we, have, we have all three factions: the Feds, Klingons, and Romulans, all fighting with their flagship there. It's nice to see it. more of the board task as well, and more of Captain Corrin. We, that's basically the oh, second yeah. time we've ever. I Captain didn't get yet. to see her because I missed the Cleon event. So this was the first time I saw her, and I was okay. very happy to, because I, I, I missed out, because I forgot, quite, oh, Cleons quite, are this year. Quite prominent, quite prominent in this mission as yeah. well, I have to say. Quite a, quite a bit of dialogue and inclusion. Oh, and the other, uh, you know, I'm going to make a, another, because we nitpick on this show a lot. Uh, the only other nitpick I have with this uh, is the, the other voiceovers. While uh, a few of them are great, some of them are okay. But um, the problem I have here is, and this happens a lot, and I've seen other people complain about this too, is I do hate it when... They'll have the voiceover for like the first line of text, so you go, "Oh, I can just sit back and relax and listen for a bit." Oh no, they're just gonna read the first. Now I have to get up and read the rest. I hate that. Cryptic, yeah. please, if you're gonna just do a voiceover, either have it not read the first line of dialogue, just something random like you've done in the past, or even better, if you're going to do voiceovers, read the whole box. I, d I don't know why you're just deciding with one line. I don't know how much of a money save that is because I'm not making this and paying and stuff but still it's just annoying as a player to, to go oh i can relax and just listen and then you have to go oh i was tricked but anyway nitpick uh, we've, there's, there's any nitpicks in this mission but generally i think we both really very enjoyed. good and i i will say cryptic i really do hope that you make more of these more frequently because i think they just get players so hyped especially the the hardcore trek fans that i i know i've been sitting around here for a while just waiting for the story to continue and it's 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 good to see massive plot progression as well, and oh my god, there are some plot, oh plot progression especially. But anyway, that's a discussion for a different show. We're exactly. the family fan. So there is uh, this isn't enough to for us to go. Hey, news bump and news, but there's there's this is probably going to be news later on. But there's a little bit going on on the the forums, which usually we wouldn't reference, but I feel it's important to reference here. But there's been a lot of like foundry drama going on on the forums, of course, because that's the Stowe forums, they're full of drama. But this one, I think, does have a little bit of credibility, 
it has to do with the the Foundry Challenge Eight. Um, we mentioned it about a week. I think it was last week actually, where we said go out and play those missions because they need some plays and stuff. Uh, the deadline is November six. If you haven't figured it out, we didn't know it then. I think it is November six where I read it. But the problem here is um, we've got uh, a huge gap between plays or a huge variety of uh, play numbers for each of the missions. The first one listed is, I forget the name, but it's by P. Sutherland, I believe. And his has so many plays compared to a lot of the other ones on the list because his is the first one. So, of course, everybody who looks at the list goes, I'll start with the first one and work my way down. And, of course, people will peter off and stuff. But it's really bad this time because a lot of the plays are low. Yeah, I mean, I mean didn't you say that you've seen a few comments basically? Well, I think um, there's a few comments basically saying, well, it's kind of corrupting the result. I think Brandon said that or something. No, or it was players. Like Brandon, else. Brandon tried oh, to defend right, okay. it. He said, and I, I do kind of have to agree, but I'm, I'm siding with the people who are complaining about the. Uh, well, this isn't working. I'd also, I'd also like to point out to those complainers out there that the fact that people don't have to actually use the star rating. They probably use a star rating a piece other than because that's the first one they saw. The next few missions that you play down the list is probably missions that they've they actually played but haven't reviewed. I, I just thought I'd point out. For all, for all we know, they've had 200 players each, for example, and they simply haven't reviewed them or some of the things. I mean, it's a long shot. But yeah. people don't have to review it at that's, the same that's time. That's a possibility. Uh, like I said, it's unlikely, but be op be optimistic about that possibility because it can happen and it does happen. But I don't think lot. it's as big as it, it seems. I'm I'm gonna side with the complainers that it doesn't. I, I'm because even then, you've got the top mission. It has like something around 100 plays, and most of them have 30 to 20. So already, if let's just say a few people didn't review. It'd have to be a ridiculous number in order to balance out. And you have to assume even then for P. Sutherland's, there's people who did not review, so it didn't count for plays. So there is a huge gap between who's getting more plays, which means there are more chances for people to vote for the mission they played. So more people play this mission, that means there's more chances people will vote for it. It's because they haven't played the other ones, so chances are they're not going to vote for it. So that's the complaint I'm seeing from people, and I believe... I saw, I can't, uh, I should probably confirm this. If I confirmed it, it's going to be in the lower third. If not, then it's not confirmed. But I believe Sutherland pulled out because he didn't feel it was fair. Uh, Hippie John pulled out. Um, so we're having Foundry authors now pulling out of the challenge because they, they just seem it's unfair. Brandon's trying to defend it because, yeah, he says just because it does have a play even doesn't mean that person's going to end up voting for the mission or whatever. But but still, you've got this point. huge gap. So He does have a point. Yeah. It doesn't really have to affect it. And it's like, it's, it's like I said a second ago, not everybody reviews it and both keep one and the same I mean it's 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 completely up to the players and they, to have the ultimate fair view contest you have exact have to have exactly the same number of players by exactly the same number of people by the same people in order of this to be fair um, one or one or two votes maybe ten votes either way it would be acceptable but I, I'm, I haven't really looked at the star star ratings the number of players in, in the foundry challenge before uh, and when I have, I can't remember them now. Uh, but the, the, I would guess, I would estimate, there wouldn't be that, you know, level with each other. And even if there were, it still defeats the point. I mean, it's it's like Brandon and I said a second ago. It, it doesn't really affect anything if it if you have no evidence to back it up. It's just speculation at this point. Yeah. Until the results are out, you don't know. So stop. So I'm, I'm I'm advising people to just stop complaining about something you don't know. You really, you you don't know. So don't complain something about a hypothetical and speculative reason. As somebody who likes to complain and has a podcast that's just an hour of complaining, I'm gonna side a bit with the complainers here. I think they do are bringing up valid points, and I think it is valid to look at too. I take my logic and substitute your logic with mine. I don't care. Um, the, the, the other problem is too I think I, I haven't looked I have not participated in the Foundry Challenges before whether it's I've played a, I haven't really gone yeah, through yeah. and played them all just because I don't have the time it's usually working on the show and then at that point it's like ah, I want to go play another game or do something else but I also have an author for these just because it takes a lot to author a mission and with the state of the Foundry I don't I, me personally I don't find yeah. it worth authoring but so I it's, it, it is important to look too the last challenge 
honestly was kind of a failure. Remember, we had the foundry down for a month during that process, so I think a lot of interest was lost because of that. Just like as we saw yeah. when the foundry was down for that two month period for including season myself, four. Including myself, I have to mention as well. So, so we're having, I think, that same problem, and we're seeing the effects with the next challenge. A lot of interest was lost because of how poorly the last one went. Also, what weren't the votes for the last one? The last one lost too. Now that I remember. So I think that might have affected people. Yeah, the last, the last one was a bit... Ooh. So I think um, that's turned a lot of people away. So I think that's why this challenge is not going over so well, just because of all the issues that happened. In the that's, last again, like, okay, we can debate this for a thing, but that, that's just complete speculation. I see no evidence of anything happening for, def for any definition, but that's a discussion for another yeah. day, to be honest. This is this is this is it, it, you keep, making. Keep an eye on the, the challenge. Keep in keep in, keep in mind of both of our points, yep. not just just not just mine, not just Murphy's. Go ahead and keep do some research and see what happens. Yep. Hopefully, it's a workout. Yeah, I'm, I I I I will want to see how this challenge does when it's over and how the next one does because I my gut feeling says the challenges aren't going so well after the last one, and I'll, I'll mm -hmm. have to see how they go. I'd I'd I'd, I'd, I'd wait and see the yep. next one first. Because I'd make a that. So and there's also other things to factor in too because we have we've argued on this show say the foundry needs a lot of improvement both in game and out and stuff like that so hopefully that gets fixed up. But uh, that was basically it. There's more. If you go onto the still forums and you want to read more forum drama, go right ahead. There's tons there this week. But uh, otherwise, let's get into our view of Purity Five of leadership. <laughs> All right, before we get into Purity 5 of Leadership, I want to address a few things we've been hearing about our review of Part 2. We've had a few complaints pop up that we were a little too negative on it and stuff like that. Um, all I want to say for that is we did focus a little more on the negative aspects of that mission. There were some positive, like I think we both said technical was very good. I don't know if it's people focusing on what we said negative. I know we did repeat a lot that we felt plot the plot yeah. for part two could have been taken out. I think that's where the misunderstanding happened here. Is we, I think we said several times part two could be taken out. It was kind of a waste. It, it was not that the whole part was a waste and should be taken out. It was mainly the plot. So it wasn't to say, oh my god, the, the person who worked on this mission, it was terrible. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're not aiming at any authors here. What we're saying is basically, well, the, it's like Murphy said, the, the, the plot didn't exactly do anything for the series is, and we still stand by what we said exactly and um, we're not targeting anyone just just because somebody po posted the the mission doesn't mean we're purposely tagging them it, besides this was a group effort yeah so it's hard it to tell who's responsible no individual should have been solely doing on this mission so i don't understand why these comments are coming yeah, up what we it didn't. means like in any circumstances um people are going to focus on the negative side of things for missions they don't enjoy we ourselves have done it in the past there are some missions out there which we've actually gone through the review process and have never been on the show uh, i mean i think one mission has been like a three star or something and it's like why would we put that, that on was, the show uh, it's a terrible that mission was the cleon uh drinks are enough. that was a cleon <laughs> that was a cleon rise mission. <laughs> yeah oh. it's exactly it's exactly that we, we wouldn't put on the show but we try at the same time to make it constructive feedback i mean okay maybe a couple of times we may go overboard but we try to make it constructive and as uh, i, I want to say proper as far as there's a close time for that as we can in terms of feedback so we stand by what we've said and there's no personal targeting this is a group of anywhere so it shouldn't have been and yeah, yeah. that's just that's what we that's what we if do it, it, those people are viewing missions yourself should know this already as well yeah just, just you got to be fair to people and that's what we try to do on the show i mean we 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 do nitpick too right and it, and that's because of the way we review we do pick pitches apart so we are going to nitpick I mean, like I think it's it's yeah. it's it's the way our review process works. It, that's that that's 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 how our score sheet was designed to do. We were designed to focus on every single part of the mission that we could that we noticed, and and score it, and then review it. That's part of our process. Yeah. So so is there some things like we could have done differently? Yeah, but in the end, we weren't really targeting any authors. For those of you who saw that we no, were targeting. Definitely not. Uh, I, you know what I'll say? It was Bazag's name is on the mission. I love Bazag. I was not. We were not targeting him at all. We love Bazag. Hell, you've done voiceover work for him, so yeah. <laughs> so it, it was not like that. 
But uh, if it did come across to you that way, it, it, that was not the intention. Yeah, no single person should be taking credit for this. No, in fact, we it stopped. Should be a group, it should be a group credit effort yes. from everyone who participated. Yeah, because especially because there are people who worked on this series, I believe, who have not authored any of them. I, I think Rogue Enterprise has yeah. done the daily, but he's not with the, the six parters. There's a few others, like I think Kirk Fett's involved, who I don't think is going to have a part, stuff like that. So we, we, we're not really focusing on who's off. That's why we don't even mention it anymore, because it is the group effort here. So yeah. when, when they come on the show, hopefully, I don't know who we've got. I think we've got Drogan right now confirmed for, it's going to be around the 15th. Uh, we'll have to see how much collaboration is going on, because I know it is extremely limited with the way the Foundry tool set is set up. But there's some going on there, whether it's art asset sharing and story writing and stuff like that. So I'll be very interested to see, because it is great to see that all these officers are working together to pull this off for the first time. But, uh, Anyway, that we just wanted to address that real quick because a few people would bring up that up as uh, bring that up as concerns. So we want to address that real quick before we get into purity five of leadership. So we what's our stats for this one like? Well, as of the recording, six hundred and sixty players with an average star rating of four point six. Mm, but this is yeah. I think I think we played this as a Thursday. I uh, uh, this, these stats are from an hour ago. So unless they drastically changed. Mm, oh, okay then. Um, but that's an extremely high star rating, and I can't see that falling too much far down, because, don't. well... Yeah. <laughs> well, well, we'll get into it. Do you want to start off there for exactly why that happened? Because it was a good mission. I, yeah, I know a few, I've seen a few people complaining about it, and people going, this isn't the favorite. I'm going to say right off the bat, this is my favorite part of the series, and I'm going to argue why yeah. it is the best one, and our scores reflect that completely. And we'll, we'll get into that. Why is this the best part of the series, and why is this a very damn good mission? And we'll get into that right now. So let's roll right into the story. Commander Derrigan must be apprehended in order to reveal more of the conspiracy going on in the background within Starfleet. Bigger plans are discovered that threaten the entire Federation. And how high does this corruption go? So we left off at a good point where you're like, ooh, what's going on here? And you know the next part you're going to start discovering this stuff. So immediately jump into that and it's fun. Um... So the plot here is excellent. There are so many plot twists in this mission that it's gonna, it's oh. keeping you on your toes. So I mean, we but that was the first thing both me and we we mentioned. It's like, oh my god, is this story heavy? And boy, were things revealed. There is a lot of story progression in this one part yeah. alone. I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna give a tease of, of, of towards of the ending, of basically saying, well, once it happens, you will think back to what you've done and you realize. Oh my God! This is this, this is what happened. And this is the best. This is the best cliffhanger I think of the series that I've enjoyed because I'm so oh pumped my, for this finale oh, because of it. But uh, of course, I don't want to say too much into it because, especially about halfway into this mission, stuff's getting revealed that you want to be surprised about. So we're not going to say anything about that. But uh, the only thing I will address here is I've been reading through reviews, and I've been keeping up with what other people are saying on this mission, too, just because this is something targeted for, at least it's supposed to be, for the whole player base, because it is being spotlighted as a Foundry feature spotlight. And a lot of people do seem to be complaining that this is a little dialogue-heavy. There's a lot of plot going on here, and it is very complex, and some of them have found it very hard to follow. And I, I'm going to decide with them a little bit. There are some parts where I'm still trying to wrap my head around it, but that's not a bad thing, at least in my opinion. Uh, I really do enjoy that the plot in this one is just so complex and interesting. As most of the plots in Stowe tend to be very simple, easy to follow, sometimes not interesting. This one... Apart from the, apart from the icon, I know. Yeah, that's the one that's complex and so interesting to follow and stuff like that. Um, I think the reason why this plot is so well, though, is because it is complex. There's a lot of thinking involved, so you've got to use your brain. Definitely. So maybe it does require you go through it and play it a second time just to catch up on more story aspects. Hell, that kind of goes into replayability there. But it, it, so that that might I don't know if there's anything the authors can do to make it a little simpler to follow, but I feel like personally I'm fine with it. No real there's, issues here. Yeah, the the. the word. I will address a concern. A few people I know is commenting the fact, well, there's too many plot lines going on, I can't follow it, it's confusing. I can see that. Yeah. Um, and traditionally, what I've seen is two or three plot lines, maybe the most is a good idea, an ideal candidate for uh, basically the average player. Anything more than that, unless it's linked in really well, which I'm, in, this, in this series I think it really I is, think it is yeah. then, well... It doesn't work as well for the average player, but I think in this, uh, I think in this series, 
I think in this series that, well, since it's linked in so so well to each other, it you try to follow each and every aspect. You're gonna be like, wow, is is this really happening? It's some some cases you can find it a little bit difficult to wrap your brain around it, but generally, I think most of the time, this plot would be. I don't want to say easy. I want to say average and good enough to follow for the average player really to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like yeah, there is a, there's like four I think we counted different plot lines kind of getting converged here, which makes it interesting. Could it be hard to follow a little bit? But I think it, it it's kind of needed for at least what they're going with. Could it have been left out if it was written differently? Yeah, but you know what? I'm liking the way it is right now. So pff, who am I to complain? Uh, characters are great in this one. There's definitely a lot of effort put into them to make them interesting and important to the story. We've seen a lot of Foundry missions where it's just like, this person tells you to go over here and hit the button. And that's all the characters are in this mission. No, they are integral to the story. They're going to make story twists and stuff like that. And I love it. And even, I love the, um, you're going to get to see Mr. President of the Federation in this. And hell, that only happened in the show once, right? Oh, no, in the movies it happened. But in the TV show it happened once. That was it. And I love having that come back up and seeing a little bit of the, the, the Federation politics there and meeting him and stuff like that. So I like that. That's cool to see. Um, in fact, I think it, he's appeared in... No, he didn't really appear in that one mission. Never mind. I haven't played one where he's in the mission. I feel he's in another one, though. But, so that's cool to see there. The characters are great here, and you will definitely find them interesting. Dialogue is very well written, and a plus... I, we did complain last... Was it last part or two parts ago where it was kind of... I think it was the last one. Yeah, there was a part earlier where we complained. You get a little bit of branching dialogue, but it's really all alien Between races. Vulcan. Or a Vulcan. Yeah. yeah. And this and, one in in this it's yeah. it's it's quite the opposite. You get Vulcan and you get about three of the dialogue choices for whatever one you choose. Um so there's probably one more fit in for an Andorian or something and uh, mo- most of the species were probably essentially similar to what they are saying. So the dialogue the dialogue choices the more responses rather than actual sort of like alternate dialogue pass it's not really a multi-pass it's just saying like we respond like this because we're walking we respond like this because more we're more aggressive like an andorian that sort of a thing so it's it's it, it's not i like it i felt there was always something yeah. i could click in and fit with my character i mean even this series there were a few dialogue choices that didn't fit my captain completely but that always happens with foundry but it's always a bonus if you can always make one fit so in this one i think really well pulls that off so i think I'd also, I'd also like to point out that uh, towards the end of the mission, there is a dialogue uh, sequence where it's you're either a human, a liberated ball, oh, or yeah, an alien. That. Yeah, it takes into account um, race. For, 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 for good story reasons, but you'll find out when you get to there. And, and it's like, well, let's... We see, I think we're seeing it a little bit more often now in Final Missions, where it's species-specific dialogue. They've got a little like, sort of like tag at the beginning of the dialogue saying, well, if you're this, click that, so you're human. Or if you're an alien, or if you're a bog, if you're a Vulcan, that sort of thing. Um, so it, it, it generally, I, th- I think that's a good idea, actually. Uh, I like to see that. Yeah, it's, it's very nice. So if you're an author out there making a mission, I definitely take that into consideration. Uh, no canon contradictions in this mission, which is always good. And integrated plot references to continuations from previous plots in canon in this mission. So that's really cool to see. And Yeah, what, one, one, pl- one plot line we already know about is... Is, is perhaps something else is going on in Starfleet. So look back at basically every other Starfleet con- controversial thing in history that have been uh, Enterprise, perhaps, uh, uh, Paradise Lost, definitely from Deep Space Nine, and a few other ones from that era as well. You, you'll you'll see if you you'll you, you'll essentially catch on to what's 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 happening here because it's essentially the same plot, but it's obviously different because of the circumstances. Yeah. Uh, no spelling and grammar errors. Uh, there was one spelling error, but with all the dialogue in this mission, one is like nothing. So, uh, story checks in here at um, nine point six four. Our second place now in story. So, congrats on hitting the top ten in story. Because that's personally my favorite. You you wouldn't make a very good announcer. Shut I'm up. <laughs> Um, but yeah, story is great. I'm really excited to see how this is going to be done in the sixth part. This was great in this one. Very interesting. Um, moving on to technical now, because we've been seeing each of the parts in this one actually has had some of the best technical work we've seen in this series, so this one stand up like all the other ones before. Uh, yes, it does for maps. First of all, I will say some of the best maps in the series can be found here. Uh, they were heavily customized. There was one pre-made map 
But I think it was brilliantly used in the series. So even though there's a pre-made map, it's like, oh, I like the way this is used. It made sense to use a pre-made map here. And then when you have the customized maps, there's some very good ones used. So, did you like the maps, Wee Wee? Oh. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I was trying to think of what pre-made map. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it, make, it makes so much but, uh, sense you have to go, yeah. there's a pre-made? It does. It, 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 it does as well, yeah. So, yeah. That's the thing, because a lot of times when we think of pre-made maps, we think of, oh, I've seen this map before, it doesn't really fit. This one, it made so much sense why there was a pre-made map, which yeah. is usually a good idea when you're using pre-made maps. Uh, transitions were very good in this mission. Uh, I didn't have any issues with them. Uh, did you have an issue, Wee Wee? Your score was a little bit lower. Yeah, the, I noticed a couple of cases where maybe transitions could have been improved. I mean... Uh, to, uh, right at the beginning of the mission, you have to, right, rather unsurprisingly, engage another Federation ship, as you've done in the last mission. So you, you sort of like, well, I'm, I'm expecting you to do this, but it's a very, there's a very unique set of circumstances which almost prevents you from doing that. I'll touch more on gameplay on that a little bit later. But in that, what you do is you interact a couple of times, there's a bit of dialogue, there's a bit more dialogue, and then you transition. And it's like, well, I didn't even get to fight the thing. And, well, I noticed, I think it was maybe one or two other cases where you sort of, like, go into this bit. Um, I, I think it, it, it won at one of the room. I can't remember which room it was now. And you have to do, I think it's maybe the puzzle. And just, that's basically it. You have a bit of dialogue. You run in there and that's it. Yeah. Or something. Um, it's it's, it's case, it's like, I, I don't know if it was that nice specifically, but there was definitely something on the ground like that. So I think... Transitions in a couple of places could have been improved, generally, but mo most most of the time, I think the series has pretty pretty much nailed it. I, I I did like a few of the transitions where they do avoid the map triggers, and it's done perfectly to make a great feel for the mission, especially towards oh, the yeah. end and stuff like that. Oh yeah, oh yeah, another one talking about. Oh god, yeah, yeah that, that one was awesome. Oh jeez, yeah. brilliantly pulled. You up. guys gonna play this mission when you when you look back at what we're saying here, you will completely understand why we said what we said. Yep. Because, oh my god, was it good. Um, great art asset usage to create structures and sets. Um, the one I love is you're in the... Uh, we mentioned the president's in this mission. You're in his office at one point. And I, I like how... Tell, tell what you said. Tell him what you said to And me. of course, and it, let's go to this logically. You, we mentioned the president. You go into his office, rather by a logical circumstance. So that means you have to be in Paris. And you would expect, well, you can't exactly be in Paris, can you? So therefore, there should be more windows. There is a window with the built Eiffel Tower oh, yeah. out there and to protect the to protect the assets so you don't like, you know, break the looking of it. There's an invisible wall that to prevent you going through. And it's like I really didn't expect that. That's a really good effort. It would have been easy just to say there's no windows here, so blah. That's probably what I would have done. But no, they took the time yeah, but, and effort to build this. It's awesome. Yeah. It, it was good, yeah, because it's just like, well, if there's no windows here, there wasn't a show, why don't we know? We went, no, it was hard to build the Eiffel Tower. In this case, well, they built the Eiffel Tower anyway and said, try and suck on that. <laughs> it's basically what I saw. Exactly. Uh, it's so. so well done, and I love it. And there's tons of other cool uses of the art assets in this to make cool stuff like that. So you'll definitely have some cool things to look at while you play through this. Uh, so much creativity across all boards in this. Um, so you know what? This is going to be leaning into all the different aspects of this. Uh story plot tons of plot twists that are just so creative and they make sense that that adds to creativity quite a bit technical we're already saying it here why it's so, it's so creative like the eiffel tower being built and all that stuff so much creativity there um gameplay we'll get into that even more in depth in a second though but the there is so much creativity put into how the gameplay is going to work in this especially the non-combat right off the bat we'll get into that in space gameplay but that was just creative there i loved that um but overall, I think we both gave it 10 in creativity. There is a lot of creativity just in this part oh alone, my God, yeah. and it's it, great. There were so many plot twists and technical achievements and a few, even few gameplay achievements as well. I really liked the, the, the uniqueness and surprises I had in this mission. It was really It fun. was awesome. So definitely, I'm giving props to the people who did all the, who were responsible for all this creativity. It's some of the best I've seen in the Foundry. Uh, great user help in the in the mission. We've had a few complaints on the parts where it was like there were kind of summaries and stuff. I felt the instructions were clear, and in yeah. fact they included Good like um, extra instructions in the dialogue, which was nice. So you could clearly tell what to do. The uh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, that 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 just means basically well, this mission pretty much hit it. 
that's what you basically need to do for the entire series. It, a little bit more consistency would be nice throughout the series. Yeah, I know. I know other. I know uh, we have different authors working on it, but you do want a little bit of consistency, and I definitely think the user help is yeah. one that should remain consistent, along with I think the dialogue. It, it's weird to have like so many dialogue options in this part when the other ones, some of them were linear. I'd say maybe take a look at that, but. Uh, the only the only issue I will say with user help in this mission is there's a there's a puzzle we'll get into. There are no instructions for this puzzle, and I felt it meaning no. like, what am I supposed to do with this puzzle? There's a bunch of math equations in front of me, and huh? So that part put some instructions there because that puzzle I did not like just because I did not know what to do because there's no instructions. So that's the only complaint. But otherwise, I, very good. You find math hard, don't you, man? I do find math hard. Yeah, I don't like math. If you follow me on Twitter, you will usually see me complain Monday and Wednesday about math when I'm in class the whole time. So if you hate math too, follow me and we can complain together. Uh, the only found your limitations in this mission was NPC pathing or like um, we don't have the ability in the foundry to have an NPC follow the player around like the cryptic devs do. We've seen it in tons of missions oh. before, so they do kind of smartly get around it by. It was convincing. Yeah. It was convincing. Though, I have to say. There's an NPC, yeah, uh, which which moves out there, and almost as if like it's almost as if the finder had the tech to do exactly what the cryptic missions do, and it's like this NPC walks to here, and well, that's basically what they do. But it actually looks so convincing that NPC, it's as if they had that tech in the first place. I mean, it's near enough what we have, but we don't, and to achieve that, very is good, great. So even though it is a bit of a foundry limitation, they, they, they sort of overcame it. it you can kind of tell when they're not following you around. It would have been better if they did, but still, it yeah, works. It's, 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 there's one of a few limitations, like I think when you're on the ground, uh, you're in your ship, the interior of your ship, and you beam up to space instead of going up the table lift. It's like, well, just take the transport to the bridge there, it's just easier. It's like, well, no, let's just take the table lift. It's just a limitation there. It's, it's something that no, really, nobody could really help. Um, so. Yeah. Uh, technical here clocks in at 8.65 or 8th in technical, and it's, that's great. Um, the, the, I know a problem we usually see is when people, like, overshoot and technical to do all these like cool tricks sometimes they don't pan out and i think a few parts in this mission we've seen some issues because they've gone a little overboard they're still cool but there's a few issues that pop up because of it this one there were no real issues i think there might have been like one that i don't even remember now because it's just so cool and there's so little issues with all this cool stuff they pulled off that it works really well so i think this definitely is standing up to some cool stuff we've seen in featured episodes i i just saying it there i like it all right so, gameplay, let's get into this one now. Well, well, let's just start with space, shall we? As, as always, a space gameplay was pretty interesting in this mission. There's not been a consistent amount of space in this, in this series. I mean, missions 2 and 3 were the ones without space, but for very good reasons. In this, there is quite... It, it, it actually, I have to say a surprise in this, because in this, in this mission, there's quite a bit more to do yeah. in this mission for space. A unique array of interactions and combinations to go with the dialogue. I mean, this mission fairly entertaining on this side of things, I have to say. I mean, we don't see this often in space at all. It, it's mainly ground where we see all, this all these gameplay achievements. But in space, all we see is a few dialogue pop-ups, a reach marker, an interaction, and then beam down. Yeah, nothing ever In created. here, the, the, it, was, it was much more like what you would expect from a ground orientation. And to see it in space is, is I have to say, it's, it's very good. We don't see that often. And it's quite bad, but... It's good that yeah, it's, I mean, it's happening. this is so perfectly tied into. Um, uh, I, we're going to definitely be, I know, comparing the, the, the both of the start of this mission, and last one have a similar board the enemy ship uh, scenario to it. I I liked this boarding a lot better than the last one. Not that the last one was bad. This one I just felt was done better, and I think that's because space gameplay here made it interesting. You didn't just go just go pew pew pew. You actually did yeah. some stuff to prepare for it, and it's cool. Yeah, we, we, we mentioned, I mentioned that earlier as well. Yeah, you didn't exactly, you didn't actually fight the ship. You do something else interesting, something unique, which honestly I didn't really expect. You're putting your science uh, Star Trekky brains to use, just like they did in the show, and it's awesome. So, so your logic, you're using a your tactical knowledge of this to, to make a rather logical assumption and prepare for something, and this is what you do. And it, it, I'd say it's really, really, really well good. There's a, a lot, a lot of the te um, technical achievements are in that first bit in Dawn, uh, but there are some other things nicely spread out throughout the mission. It's good, so it's good to see that kind of thing. Uh, and actually, speaking of combat, what combat there was, there are multi-set groups present in several places with a variety of mobs, from Orion and Oscan mobs, and re which are reskinned to reskinned Terran mobs, and um, throughout the mission, which you are kind of present throughout this entire series anyway, because uh, you're fighting beds and all that stuff. But 
I mean, there's a good amount of groups to keep one entertained as well. And there's even the instance which you mentioned of avoided combat is interesting. But I have to say it was kind of a letdown, if I'm honest, because I was expecting to go for it. And it's like, well, I'm prepared to fight this, this thing. Oh, yeah, of course we did that, didn't we? So let's just beam down. I'm like, oh. But uh, anyway, you get, to, you get to flex your tactical muscles later on and destroy a whole bunch of more ships. So don't worry about that. So it's, and I'd say it's actually pretty. It's actually fairly, fairly good for those people who, who enjoy combat. It's a nice bit of multi-stacking. I particularly enjoyed it in my Kira because I have the, the torpedo console, the isometric shards, torpedo spread for it. Well, all those things. Nice. You just blow them up at the same time, and it's it's, it's a bunch of fun. So it, it's it's a nice amount of multi-stacking in this mission. I really enjoyed it. Uh, but that's not all to say about this mission. There is ground as well, of course. And I have to say the ground gameplay was interesting as well. Much like space and that there are unique flair interactions and unique and you can rain combinations which also make this part of the mission feel interesting. Ground. This is another instance of there was a puzzle as well, which I'll get into in a in a second. But it didn't really need a puzzle at all to really make this interesting. Yeah. I mean it was exactly like space in how it how it proceeded, and it's nicely spread out. You don't see often ground and space being equal on gameplay times at all. Yeah, right? It's always ground, yeah. it's always high in space, and when it's not, the space is still pretty low. And in this instance, it's the same. And I'm like, I, I can't remember the last time I actually saw that, and it's like, did I ever see that? In a I, I think we've seen it a oh. few times in some other Foundry missions. But... Maybe, maybe once or twice, but it's like, it's been ages since I've last, last seen it. And then like, that's okay. I didn't expect that. But that's pretty cool. I'll go with it. But like we said, there was a puzzle, and I think Murphy mentioned it already. Yep. There was like no information provided us beforehand, and it's just, it was a simple guess and click interaction. No information is not very helpful when you're doing a, a, a few maths, on which Murphy can't do. So it's 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 just a few a bit of clean up on that. Maybe would have been even nice. if it's supposed to be guess and check. I got the feeling it wasn't supposed to be. So you might no. want to say. If, Guess and check or something. I don't know, but yeah, it's just confusing. It's it's it, even 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 if you mention it, it's, people aren't going to be very entertained by that. It's like, well, how do you logical process? You sort of like you, you're in a room and something happens and you're just literally thrown into the puzzle with one dialogue. You sort of talking to your boss and the next dialogue, oh, what? There's a puzzle? Yeah, really? Yeah, I don't know. And I'm I, like, I've, where did that come yeah. from? I mean, I've used the the you just randomly click buttons until you get the right order puzzle before. Um, they're not very good, though, I will say. I, I would change that puzzle in my own missions, because I, yeah. I, I have a, a mystery series here on my shelf that has the best puzzles ever, so I'm always tough on puzzles in this game, and I was playing one of them last night, and it has you do a puzzle that's basically the guess and check three times, and I hate it. It's the same thing where you just have to go, which, yeah. which levers do I pull in which order, and it's different each time, and it, it, it's not fun, because it's just guess and yeah. check. It's I mean, just... I mean, I mean, I mean. Despite that, but fear not, though, because there's only like three different options. Yeah, it's so really there's not like uh, there's not like there's not like ten. The same for there's like oh, I have to go through this and keep checking, and what's the combination? It's like oh, no, there's only three. So don't worry about yeah. that. Uh, there is a bit of ground combat as well, and well, it basically starts off with when you're invading a Federation ship, and I have to say, I really enjoyed that. This was so I mean, well set up. Yeah, there's there's plenty of stacked groups with allies in close quarters. It's because it's a defiant ship. Which makes for enjoyable invasion forces, which is always very nice. Um, so you're boarding this ship. You're in a close quarters defiant. May, may I mention it's the new defiant model, the one that came with the 2800 future yep. episode series. And you've got a bunch of allies all together in the same bit. I may I just mention it's also fun when you're a physicist who's going to light them all on fire and drag them towards a mini gravity well and they all die. So it's all fun. Um, so. It, it, I'd say it was pretty good. There was a good amount of multi-stacking in this group considering the close quarters of it and you would expect that because you could just wipe the group out in one instance. But because there's more of them, it makes it more sort of like enjoyable. There's like a horde coming yeah. straight at you and you're like, you try and bottleneck them in a place and it's like, yeah, there's a lot of tactical places but limited room for it. And it's like, well, this can do, this can do, this can do. Think about and this. And the story I think fits so well with this boarding a little more than the, the last one. The last one was just kind of go get the information and then get out. This one had a lot more going on. It was harder to capture the ship. Yeah. And I like that because another one I thought of was uh, remember Doomsday Machine or whatever it was called where you have to take that Cleon ship? I didn't care for that oh, yeah. boarding as much. It was kind of easy and not much happened. It was, it was a, yeah. There was a lot of space and, this, and I think they purposely made it a defined 
simply because of that map. Yeah. Because it's like the only Federation map, or at least the only interior map in the game, which is so close. And it's set up so it well for the objectives that follow, but, and I liked that. Yeah, it made logical really sense. So that was a perfect use of a pre-made map there. So I liked it. It was good. Absolutely, absolutely great. It's not just limited to that, though. You, you fight a few mobs later in, which are also multi-stacked as well, yep. and there are a few higher mobs as well, despite that. So it's actually it's actually fairly tough in places. And so it, it, that also provides entertainment. So generally, ground was pretty much on the same level of space. You don't really see it off the day at all. Mm -hmm. Space and ground is always one orientation or the other. This is an instance where both are the same. And, well, replayability. You, you won't expect an alternate ending, because, you know, it's part five of a six-part series. I'm, I'm hoping it'll probably be maybe an alternate ending part six, but as a part of five, it's limited to alternate dialogue, but there are a lot of different choices the captain can make for determining what type of captain you are and even species that can progress this. We've we mentioned this before, but again, this this is what we need to see for a captain choice. It, linear progression is a bit boring. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think a lot of those dialogue options, no matter what you click, it still leads to the same thing, but at least gives the illusion mm -hmm. that the player has choice and that's what you want. Even if it's not going to, even if it doesn't have uh, a different outcome depending on what they pick, it, it, it creates that illusion that at least, hey, I'm picking something my captain would say it makes sense. So that's the nice yeah. thing about it. Um, I, all of them, I think most of them, if not all of them, are variations on the same type of objective. So it's like, well, you could see all of the things mentioned the same progression, so you know they're going to lead to the same dialogue box unless it's a unique circumstance, like a, a, a different species or something. But, and, and, and maybe, a, and actually saying that, maybe, maybe one or two instances of maybe creativity could be put into place where it's like, well, I'm asking this question to counter them rather than saying, well, this is what happened, this is what's happening, mm -hmm. but I'm saying it at a different way each time. I think maybe there's one or two instances of that already, but a bit more consistency on that to, to make it linear for that side of things would be nice as well. And an overall gameplay score of 7.79, which put it tied 11th with the Tangled Webs We Weave, I mean, this gameplay mission, great. Yeah, I mean, if, you, if you're one of those people who just go, I don't care for story at all, I just want to blow crap up, this mission will work for you, I think. And especially if you if you enjoy non combat aspect aspects of gameplay, you'll enjoy that too. Both in space and ground are cool, so that's really good to see here. I think it was a, a bit, it was a very nice balance in the mission between all three. But what do we have to say overall, Wee? Really? I'd say overall, it's an epic story mission with some fantastic technical features to really spice it up. Add to this enjoyable gameplay experiences all around, and this mission is a revolution for this point of the series. Absolutely a revolution. Yes. There are some places where, particularly at the end of the mission, you'll be thinking, oh my god, did that really just happen? And I have to say, this sets up part six in an extremely yeah. entertaining way. They have a lot to do in part six to really make up for this. It has me a little bit worried because there is so much that happens in this mission that leaves so much that could happen in part six, but then I start thinking, there's a lot of a room here for stuff to happen. I really hope they successfully squeeze it all into part six because, and it makes me wonder if we'll have problems with that. Because if we have problems with that, then I think we'll kind of go back to the, the parts two and three being a similar story. One of those should have been converted to make this ending a lot bigger because there's so much that's still not wrapped up yet that they're going to have to wrap up, uh, wrap up in part six. So I'm hoping they do it yeah. successfully because there's. I, I, so get, much I get the there. impression with so many. I get the impression with so many plots going on, they'll probably wrap them up. Uh, maybe two, maybe even three plot lines uh, in, uh, simultaneously at the same time for the same reason. Mm -hmm. So it's like, this is linked into this for that reason. This is why. And then you go and solve it. So it's like, well, you linked that, you linked that and you solved that, the mystery of that, and then you defeated both of them with the same objective. And I'm thinking that's maybe the, the overall objective here. Um, I, I, think, I, think, I think the most obvious thing to do is wrap everything up with a single something or other to do. But doing things individually as you go along before you get to that point would probably be, probably be an ideal candidate, I'd say, for maybe an end part. Yeah, we'll have to see how it plays out, because it could work really successfully, or it could be really sloppy, I could see that too. So I we'll think it will be definitely I, successful. I think it will be somewhat successful. I don't know if it could be better. We'll have to see. We'll have to see what happens next week, because I, I, there's so much hype right now around it, I'm really hoping that it just nails the ending home for how much cool stuff happened in this mission. Overall, it checks in at 8.72, our second place mission overall that we have reviewed on Foundry Files here. So not only has this mission hit the top 10 list, it's like not the top. 
So that's awesome. Almost beat. It's, we're, get, we're, we're getting close enough to a Moon. Yeah, so it, close. Well, okay, it's, 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 it's 0.24 off, which is actually rather significant, but it's still getting closer. We're getting closer to that think, point. All right, let's lay a prediction down. Do you think part six will be able to surpass Balnar Moon? I couldn't honestly guess. It entirely depends on how, how well they did it. I feel like we've got so many good Foundry authors and great ones working here that I think they could pull it off. I think they could beat Balnar it, it, If, 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 if right. they pull it off, it would have to be a, an extremely good revolution of a mission. Yeah, I mean... Because it's going to be extremely difficult to, to defeat Balnar Moon. The only way I can see Balnar Moon defeated is if we get a 9, yeah. which is ridiculously hard. That, that means you do. have to succeed at a whole bunch of stuff. But... I mean, you don't need to, of course, but still, that'd be super cool. That means this is just so high up there. Everybody's going to find something they love about this mission. Um, so I'm pumped. I'm definitely intrigued to see how this mission's wrapped up. And I, I can't wait to talk to the authors who made this, because not only is it just fun to play at this point now, how it's coming to, as we get towards the end, it's it's just so cool to think about how, how many authors have been working on this. Because a lot in the past, people have always talked about Oh, we should work on collab stuff. Well, the Foundry doesn't do it. I think these people are pulling it off quite successfully here in the Foundry. So I can't wait to, to hear them and have them give advice to other people out there who might want to try the same thing. Because if we can get yeah, a whole bunch of projects they, like this, that'd be cool. Yeah, just because they don't have the mechanic in stow to share missions doesn't mean it's not possible. Oh my god, there's so many mechanics we don't have in stow yet. We work around it all the time, and this just proves that's it. Off, I? <laughs> oh man, but very fun mission. I can't wait for next week. Uh, if Now we're approaching Cleon Month, so... Oh, okay, wait, we did get the, the release date of Season 8, which is, like, the 12th. So, of course, that usually means Foundry Files is off during then. But I think if the interview depending works on. out, we should still be on, uh, depending on how long we're without Foundry, which I'm, I'm, I'm not thinking it's going to be too long. I think it'll be, like, two weeks or something. So we might yeah. have a week off there. But afterwards, I'm thinking that's when we'll be starting up Cleon Month. So continue to send your Cleon missions in, and we'll start checking that out. We'll probably do Cleon Month. Clam month won't be an official month, but it'll be up till the end of the year. And then, of course, at the end of the yeah. year, we'll do our uh, top ten list again, as we did last year. And we'll see where people Hopefully, it's, hopefully it's not like a mere three weeks clean month or something, or two weeks. Or something if, like if it becomes that, we'll, we'll move it to January, make it January or something like that. I, I do want to get a... Uh, like at least four or five really cool Cleon missions to you guys in that in that period yep. of time because of course I think we only have like four or five Cleon missions right now reviewed so of course we want to get some more out there. Also, if you make a Romulan mission, I know we can't do it right now, but if you make one, send it that way too because those are cool to see as well. But yeah, that's uh, foundryfiles at gmail dot org to email us there. You can follow us on Twitter and all that stuff. Uh, that, that's, that's it. it. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I don't, I don't do it if I say Google, I'm sorry. I mean, yeah. breathe. Hello, hey ladies, it's Admiral Murphy here, and I'm here to tell you that that's Wee Wee. Save me, please. My, but my jacket has buttons, his has a zipper. One is fancier than the other. Also, mine's a turtleneck, but I look really stupid if I buy it all I, I like, up. I like zips, though. Zips are cool. I hate this. I only like the jacket, but I hate it because of this. I hate how this feels, and it looks so messed up, turtleneck. I don't, I don't like it. I don't. I hate those. I don't like it. That looks okay. They don't look good on guys. They look great on girls. Don't look good. Yeah, I know. Sexist right there. Sorry.